I figured now is as good a time as any to dig out this Dell Latitude laptop from a bygone era, the days when Windows Vista reigned supreme. It's actually been featured on my channel not once, but a total of two times. The first was a sort of introductory review of its features and specifications and things like that. The second video in which it starred was my discussing how I accomplished upgrading it to Windows 10. And to this day, that is one of my more popular videos, and I'm still getting comments from a number of people wishing to get a detailed breakdown of how exactly I accomplished that. There's a lot of people that want to be able to teach their old laptops new tricks and be able to run more contemporary operating systems like Windows 10. Even by today's standards, this computer is still reasonably equipped with a host of input and output ports, like a VGA port, only USB 2.0, but for all intents and purposes, uh, that's really all you need. It would definitely be nice to have USB 3.0, but you can't have everything with a 10 plus year old computer. There's an eSATA port, SD card, memory card reader, an express card slot. There's a PC card slot, and something that's also rather difficult to find on modern computers, an optical drive, hardware wireless switches, and WPS buttons, dedicated microphone and headphone jacks, unlike most lap modern laptops where it's combined into a single tip ring ring sleeve 3.5 millimeter cell phone headset style jack and of course port USB 2.0 ports a display port Ethernet 10100 might even be gigabit and the 56k dial-up modem for those times where you're in the middle of nowhere and you need to connect to the internet via dial-up there's dedicated buttons for the touchpad track point stereo speakers that are actually on the top of the computer that face at you and they don't fire down at your desk no webcam but who needed it back when this computer was new now of course windows 11 does have very stringent hardware requirements i think you need tpm 2.0 secure boot and a supported processor and there might be something else that I'm failing to mention right now. As a quick aside here, why is it whenever a computer loses power running this version of the Dell BIOS with this style splash screen and this loading bar, does it take so damn long to load? I don't know what it is, but if whatever reason something gets screwed up and like the computer gets turned off and not properly turned off as if like you just yanked the power cord, then the next time that you boot it up, it just takes its sweet time running through, I guess, the the pre-boot checks or whatever is going on in the background and it just takes a really really long time now this computer is currently running four gigabytes of RAM and I have to get used to this camera I'm using a Canon GL1 here and uh, because it's such a large camera I'm actually finding myself bumping into things with the lens hood uh, I'm not used to recording with such a large prosumer camcorder but it's running two of these Kingston 2 gigabyte RAM modules for a total of 4 gigabytes. I actually went ahead and upgraded the hard drive of this computer to aid in its ability to keep up with the intense resource demands of Windows 10 and subsequently Windows 11. And I removed the 250 gigabyte Western Digital Blue Drive that this computer came with when I bought it used. It was a 5400 RPM drive really was struggling to keep up with everything and back during the winter months of 2022 Amazon had it listed for around 22 or 23 dollars and I figured what better computer than this Dell Latitude E6500 I figured well why not use this as a guinea pig of sorts to see how things go and here it is running Windows 11 do you notice anything wrong powered on fans not doing anything and the screen is totally black it's not doing anything and unfortunately this is one of the issues I've had with this computer back when it was running Windows 10 and now with Windows 11 I don't know what the problem is but every now and again it has these sorts of hiccups and flights of fancy where it just kind of stops responding locks up and the only option is just to power it off and power it back on and so here we are what everybody's probably been waiting for this entire time upgrading this thing to an SSD has helped immeasurably in its performance and usability 
Now, as inconsequential and insignificant as this may sound, the original Dell software that this computer came with is still running on Windows 11. So, for example, to activate the ambient light sensor, and this is going to be a bit of an interesting ballet here, because I don't have a tripod yet. If I press the function key and the button to enable and disable the automatic ambient light display setting, where it'll dim depending on the ambient lighting, you can see it pops up here on the screen because the Dell, whatever it's called, I think Quick, Quick Set Program or something like that, is actually still running. Now, believe it or not, Windows 11 on this computer actually seems to be doing better than Windows 10 because back in the day when this was running Windows 10, and that wasn't all that long ago, the SD card reader, for whatever reason, would just disappear from my computer or this PC, such as the case may be. And there was no fix for it. No matter what driver I tried installing, nothing worked. The only thing that was able to get it to show backup and allow you to use your SD card with the reader that this computer came with is to turn it off and turn it back on. Sometimes you had to power it off and on a couple of times before it began to start working. So I don't know what the problem was with that. I'm sure it was some kind of a driver conflict between Windows 10 and the drivers for this machine and the hardware it's running. This is version 21H2 and you can see that it was installed on March 9th of 2022. So the only problem that I've run into thus far with the graphics driver running in compatibility mode right now is the nightlight feature of Windows. What I've noticed now is if I close the screen and whether or not it goes to sleep or not really doesn't make any difference and then I open the computer again trying to do this one-handed here and I bring that back up again okay so that's really strange because now it's working just fine but the last time I was using this computer and every time you would close the screen and then open it with the nightlight turned on it would forget its settings and you'd see the, the display flash black and then turn back on and I was just as I just chalked it up to being some kind of a display incompatibility but it's working just fine now you really can't tell on camera because of the way I have the white balance adjusted but everything is a very warm shade now because the nightlight setting is working so I guess one of the updates must have fixed that. And this is mildly concerning because this was not displayed the last time I used the computer. But it's telling me that virus and threat protection has stopped working. So that is concerning somewhat because Windows and rather Microsoft. Okay, so something definitely very strange is going on in the background. Maybe this is updating itself behind the scenes. Because I'm pretty sure everybody just saw that live where it said I needed to restart the computer. And now it just disappeared. So I guess it just is kind of a constantly evolving ecosystem with Windows always updating. Just like in the video where I showed Windows 10 running on here. It's vitally important that one tracks down the Intel Rapid Storage Technology driver that was supplied by Dell back in the day because this stupid driver and program is what's necessary for the audio to work correctly. Something about the AHCI drivers for this machine are supplied through this driver. So if you don't install this, you're gonna have problems with audio stuttering and latency issues, cutting in and out, glitches, all kinds of weird stuff like that. Definitely make sure to track down the Intel RST driver so you don't have problems with stuttering audio. This is the version 9.6.0.1014 of the Intel Rapid Storage Technology Program. And all the Dell Control Point programs work as they should. Of course, it was definitely a bit arduous getting everything to work and cooperate. And the key, I think, was to get everything installed and working in Windows 7 before you upgrade it to Windows 11. What I ended up having to do is install many of the Dell programs that this machine came with in Windows 7 using uh, compatibility mode for a couple of the programs that were primarily aimed at Vista. But then I upgraded it to Windows 11 and all the programs were retained and they work fine. But if I tried installing any of these programs right now fresh with a clean slate right on Windows 11, it wouldn't let me. Windows would say that the program is incompatible. 
So that is a bit of a workaround. You can see everything is installed and working correctly on their device manager. But when you upgrade to Windows 11 for the first time on here, it's going to show a bunch of different pro diff a bunch of different devices with a red like an exclamation mark because there are no Windows supply default drivers. You have to install those Dell programs to get them to work. I also, like I do with most every computer now running 10 and 11, is I added all the user folders back to the start menu, just like it used to be in Windows 7. So you can just get to your downloads, music, pictures, videos, and the like with a single click. You click it, and there you go. It pops right up. Now you're probably wondering to yourself when the New York Times came out with a dark mode for their website. Well, they didn't. I'm actually running the Dark Reader extension for Google Chrome right now, which allows you to convert any website and act as if it has a dark mode by inverting the colors. And this seems to be the best extension that I've been able to find for this purpose. YouTube works flawlessly, and I know all of my computer videos always come back to whether or not YouTube works well, but that's a pretty fair shake of a computer to see if it's going to be able to keep up with the modern web, checking emails, writing Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, and the like. If it can't keep up with YouTube, chances are it's going to have issues with pretty much everything else, and YouTube works pretty much flawlessly. This computer can play 720p60 decently well, You'll see that there are a few drop frames, and this doesn't even have that much motion in the background, but you can see that we are dropping frames occasionally. Well, here's an older video of mine that uh, I uploaded in 1080p, and it is playing at 30 frames per second. You can see that occasionally it is dropping a frame or two, but it's still able to keep up. It's really not that obvious that it is dropping a frame or two every now and again, but 720p is definitely the go-to on this computer if you want flawless video with no drop frames well, I guess with one drop frame but then once everything settles down it plays without so much as a hiccup and this is the iTunes app here and I guess something went bottoms up because uh, yeah nothing's loading there's supposed to be like an agreement or something to share your music library data with iTunes to get album artwork and the like and uh, nothing is showing up right now and I don't know why this screen is so overexposed. You can see there's nothing showing up. I wonder what happens if I click here. The audio is nice and crystal clear. It's not cutting out, so it goes to show the importance of getting that Intel Rapid Storage Technology Driver up and running. Otherwise, you're going to have lots of issues with latency and buffer overruns and overflows. It gets nice and loud. Hotkeys still work for controlling the audio. If I click this button here, if I click this button here, there we go. You have to click this one first to bring up the battery program, uh, Dell Control Point Power Manager. And then now if you click Function and the battery with the lightning bolt, you see it'll disable the battery charging. So all this stuff works. And this has been like the running joke of this video because the security icon keeps changing between being good to go and showing us the green check or whatever it is to the yellow exclamation mark. And now it's not telling us that the virus service has stopped running. It's telling us that it's due for a quick scan. And because I'm sure everybody's chomping at the bit to ask and find out, yes, updates from Microsoft are currently working, although there has been speculation that Microsoft will eventually cut that off and no longer provide security updates for Windows 11 installations on unsupported PCs. You can see that updates are working just fine. It last checked at 1235. It's showing a couple of these that are pending download. I can click download and away we go. So it is getting updates from Microsoft. Now we're gonna see if it does the same behavior again. Yep, there we go. I knew it was gonna do that. Why well, resumed all the way in. I just fired up the Amazon Prime Video app and the graphics driver is not having it. So this is what was happening that I was trying to describe before about how the nightlight feature was not working. But thankfully the graphics driver never crashes, it just kind of has a hiccup or two and stutters and sidesteps. And there's another weird quirk that Doug DeMiro would be proud of. I don't know what happened to the icons on the taskbar, but they just disappeared with no explanation whatsoever. 
So I don't know if that's got something to do with the weird graphics driver behavior. But uh, you can see that it's still showing the badge for the unread emails. But the icons themselves are missing. So I wonder what will happen if I close the screen. Okay, so they're still not showing up. That's promising. So this is what I meant by don't try this at home. And if you do, I'm not responsible for what happens to your computer or your operating system install. But you could see that none of the icons are showing up here. And there's like a weird outline of one of the boxes that where it would show you like a preview of the open window. And it's not doing anything. If I click that, it just gets a pinwheel icon and nothing shows up. And likewise, volume button's not working, mute button's not working. These are the drivers that were installed to get this computer running, so... If you want, go ahead, try to type them into Google and see what comes up. Because this is what I had installed. Just pause the video. These are all the drivers that I and programs I had installed to get everything working on here. So there you go. You certainly can't teach an old dog new tricks, although they get ready to be bitten every now and again by hardware and software incompatibilities. Although it does seem to be behaving right now. And pretty snappy switching through the various open windows as well. Just like that now, in the course of a couple minutes, the audio controls have resumed working. And here's a quick at a glance look at the performance. And there's a single Google Chrome window open with a tab open to YouTube. And we're hovering at 69% CPU usage, 3.2 gigabytes of RAM. Let's try to run this uh, Web 3.0 graphics test. I don't know why it just tried zooming in. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's doing something. This is the only tab open. Okay, I don't know, something about trying to run that benchmark, even though it didn't run successfully, is causing the computer to really lag. I'm not doing that, I can assure you. I don't know what it's doing in the background right now, but uh, it's really laggy. And it wasn't doing that before I tried running that graphics benchmark, so I have to wonder if maybe something's going on behind the scenes that's causing this computer to come to a screeching halt. So this just goes to show you, you can run Windows 11 on your 10 plus year old computer. Just be prepared for there to be nuisances and annoyances around every corner. I can't say it's all that bad, especially once you get everything good to go and configured and dialed in. Everything seems to be working just fine, and it's a nice way to breathe new life in.